It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Hatzizis, a professor of cardiology and the chief of the cardiovascular division at the Miller School of Medicine, University of Miami. Today, we have the privilege of delving into his article titled Artificial Intelligence, Computational Simulations, and Extended Reality in Cardiovascular Interventions. Dr. Hatzizis, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and share your expertise on this cutting edge topic. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my immense privilege to, to be here with you in this discussion. You know, first and foremost, congratulations on the remarkable effort evident in your paper. It delves into various innovative technologies shaping cardiovascular interventions. Can you provide insight into the advancements and um, implications of artificial intelligence highlighted in the paper? Yes, absolutely. So the AI, which is the big umbrella that encompasses the um, deep learning, the, the machine learning, and so on, um, can play a very important role um, all the way from risk prediction, coming up essentially with models um, using uh, all these AI tools to predict our risk, to develop heart disease, MI, heart failure, and so on, all the way to uh, image segmentation, and this can be any non-invasive imaging modality like echo, MRI, CT, or invasive imaging like OCT, IVs, and so on, all the way to diagnosis of uh, CD. A very good example is the FFR, which nowadays can be calculated either non-invasively using AI with CT or invasively with angiography. And then finally, AI can play an important role in the treatment of uh, different cardiovascular disease, um, whether it's coronary or structural or even peripheral, and it can help us essentially um, prescribe, identify the right tailored, individualized treatment plan for uh, our patients. And I want to highlight at this point the importance of computation simulations, which is essentially a very important tool, another important digital health tool, as uh, we call it, which uh, gives us the opportunity to uh, create digital twins, um, which can then try different treatment scenarios for uh, either structure or coronary interventions. And then AI is the tool that helps us identify from all these different treatment scenarios and so on, what is the ideal, the most appropriate for our individual patients. And then on top of this, we have the third player of the whole spectrum, which is extended reality, which can help us as clinicians, as, as proceduralists, um, do uh, understand better our plant, our simulated procedure, uh, fly through from the inside, improve our cognitive skills of the anticipated procedure, and then improve our performance when it comes to the actual execution of the, of the procedure. Plus, it can help our trainees, our young um, uh, fellows, our, our uh, even staff, to have a better understanding of different techniques or different devices. It helps them to understand, to learn greater, as we could say, faster and better. So all three together, AI, simulations, computation simulations, and extended reality, are important digital tools that help us do a better job when it comes to, to, to diagnosis, therapy in a very personalized approach, uh, education, training, and of course, um, 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 you know, device R&D and approval. And we can discuss about this later on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, computer simulations is, is a topic of particular interest to me. And, and I echo everything that you said that you know, there's only increasing number of devices and interventions over time, and all of these simulations will hopefully help us choose the right device for the right patient and improve our procedural success. Another intriguing topic discussed in the paper is virtual clinical trials. For those who may be less familiar with this concept, can you describe the core aspects of virtual clinical trials and how do you envision their impact on advancing cardiovascular interventions? Yeah, that's um, also a very interesting aspect, and it shows very nicely how we can use digital technologies to advance the field nowadays, the field of uh, device R&D and regulatory approval, and in, in general, to, to improve our knowledge in the cardiovascular um, device world. Um, so the whole concept is that we know 
very well that we live in a world of evidence-based medicine where we base our knowledge and our guidelines on the evidence and that's uh, um, very uh, well done but the major problem we encounter nowadays with the multi-center clinical trials the randomized clinical trials is that in a big part they are um, uh, not representative of uh, the uh, minorities and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the diversity that exists in this uh, planet mm -hmm. and at the same time they become very expensive and a, a, a many of them either they are uh, delayed or sometimes they don't even come into fruition mm -hmm. so with the visual clinical trials we try to address these limitations of the randomized clinical trials what we can do is we can uh, try different devices or mm -hmm. different techniques Again, whether it's coronary uh, or uh, uh, structural or peripheral, same concept. And we can gather, we can study those techniques or devices, not in actual patients like what we do in with the clinical trials, but in patient anatomies. So essentially mm -hmm. we create digital twins, as we call mm -hmm. them, of different anatomies, whether it's like a tavern anatomy, like a, a, a mitral anatomy or a coronary anatomy. We um, make sure that these digital twins not only represent the anatomy, but also re they represent the physiology and biology of the actual structure. We take essentially, in a sense, the organ outside the body and translate this and move it into the computer, into the in silico digital world. Mm. And we can be this way, way more representative of the diversity and minorities and people of different color and ethnicity, because it's easier to collect patient data, digital twins versus actual patients. And in those digital twins, mm -hmm. we can run the so-called computation simulations of different devices or different techniques. And the outcomes of those virtual in silico mm -hmm. clinical trials are obviously computational uh, 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 endpoints, which are highly predictive of actual clinical outcomes. Mm -hmm. And then this way we can acquire important knowledge that can guide actual clinical trials to be conducted in a more targeted, in a more uh, sophisticated way, in a smaller scale if you want. And this way we can have the opportunity to test specific scenarios, specific devices, specific techniques, which gave us good signal, positive signal from the visual trials in actual patients using actual clinical outcomes in a more cost and time effective way. And this way we can you know, advance the field of um, the cardiovascular devices. We can accelerate their approval through FDA or other regular, regulatory bodies. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, save money save time and advance the field. So that's the whole concept of virtual clinical trials, facilitating targeted actual clinical trials. A truly exciting concept that, you know, will help us, I feel in a way, democratize clinical research and target different populations. And, you know, the article touches on numerous other intriguing topics that really merit a whole different exploration and different timing. And I really encourage our readers to delve into these different areas. Thank you again, Dr. Hadzis for sharing your expertise and really, really exciting topic and insight with us today. Thank you so much. And a big thank you to the journal, the Jack Interventions, for hosting um, uh, our paper. and. Um, our perspective. Thank you so much. I very much enjoyed this.